What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is going to be feature history of the Texas Revolution. We did a video uh, the other day and it basically mentioned about this Texas Revolution, which I had absolutely no clue about. You guys wanted me to check out uh, the explained version. Um, so we're going to get straight into it. Smash that like button, I'd really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button as well, you absolute legends. And let's check it out. Feature history of the Texas Revolution. What we got? This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Hey, howdy, partner, and welcome howdy. to Feature History, featuring the Texas Revolution, a time back when the US liked illegal border crossing. Edgy humor aside, that time was back <laughs> in the early 19th century. The area today known as Texas was a part of Mexico. The okay. US had yet adopted Manifest Destiny, and the frontier was very much alive. Today things are different, no shit, but this video is going to delve into how much change the Texas Revolution made, just how revolutionary it was. But I won't spoil you and start our story there. We're starting with European colonization. Roll the slide. Europe first began colonizing the continent of America in the 15th century. Okay. Unless you count the Norse, but I'm not going to. <laughs> colonization would not be a walk in the park. The British, French, and Spanish all found themselves struggling against the natives, the elements, and each other in their attempts to colonize the New World. Deep within this New World, was Texas. Spain and France would both claim the region, but the French would be the first to settle it in the 17th yeah. century. But then everyone died, so the fertile plains of Texas were untapped. Spain would follow up the French attempt and, through much struggle and even more stubbornness, saw limited success by the 18th century. Settled, yes, but it was the least populated area of New Spain with between only a few hundred a few thousand settlers. Oh wow. After the Seven Years' War, France would relinquish its claim to Texas and French Louisiana to Spain. But then in 1799, Spain gave Louisiana back, and then in 1803, the United States bought it. Now it was Texas and- Let me know by the way if you want me to check out, I think there's a video on the Louisiana Purchase, and it goes into how the US ended up buying the Louisiana area, which we just spoke about there. Because um, I've been suggested that quite a bit, and I am keen to check it out, so let me know if you want to see it. Included in these deals? Maybe, maybe not. There was disagreement as to actually how far these borders went, and so okay. a line had to be drawn. With the US's purchase of Louisiana, the young nation doubled in size. The Republic now shared an extensive land border with the British and Spanish empires. Yep. Relations with them weren't great. The US's kickstarted expansion and growing population led to the idea of manifest destiny, well, manifesting. Early proponents of the idea envisioned a continent united under their republic. A republic that stretched from sea to shining sea. A republic that didn't share with the old European powers. Oh, and I imagine at the time, especially the British, again, the British were so greedy, so was the Spanish and the French, just all the Europeans, to be honest with you. Um, I imagine they hated the idea of them not having control and the US becoming what they are pretty much today, um, a massive powerhouse. They must have hated the thought of that. Spain felt the pressure from the US, especially given the discrepancies in the Louisiana Purchase. The US believed itself entitled the lands as far as the Rio Grande and soon Spain's territory was being infringed upon by American filibusters. Okay. That isn't filibuster in a political sense, but a military one. Filibusters yep, were armed assume. men that took to the frontier to seize land from nations that the US was technically at peace with. <laughs> but all this was a very minor problem compared to what happened in 1808, as back in Europe, Spain was invaded by Napoleon. And after that, much of New Spain began to push and even fight for independence. Mexico would break out in revolt and quickly descend into chaos. During this conflict, a Mexican-American filibuster expedition would claim Texas, declaring it as the independent Green Flag Republic. Okay. But Spanish forces would soon offer the rebels no quarter and tear down that flag. Wow. Texas was firmly in Spain's hands. However, in this rapidly deteriorating situation, Spain sought compromise and agreed to define a common border with the US. It would not surrender Texas, instead, it would cede Florida in the Transcontinental Treaty signed February 1819. Stability. Okay, I kind of like that. They've gone, all right, look, look. You're getting a bit ahead of yourself here. But what we're willing to, we'll give you Florida. Just let's, let's keep Texas because it's part of our land over here. We've got this whole segment. You can have Florida. It's a bit out of the way. I, I like good negotiations there. Obviously, it didn't last for long, though. 
neutrality was finally achieved between Spain and the US, but Spain wouldn't stick around. The empire's colony fell apart and gave way to many independent Latin republics. Under the Constitution of 1824, Texas now belonged to the Federal Republic of Mexico. Oh wow, there we go. That's how it got in Mexico's hands. As the dust settled on Mexico, the threat of filibustering persisted, and so the new government under the presidency of Guadalupe Victoria sought to address the issue with the General Colonization Law of 1824. Okay. It would introduce the empresario system that sought to turn American filibusters into Mexican citizens. Empresarios, on the behalf of the Mexican government, would be recruited to sell Texan land to immigrants at low, low prices, and the empresarios themselves were paid in land. The population okay. of Texas, which had sat at 3,500, exploded as the empresarios established their settlements all over. The many new immigrants to Texas, or Texians as they became known, quickly outnumbered Teanos, Mexican-born residents. These immigrants were offered their citizenship as long as they learned Spanish and converted to Catholicism. But it was very typical they didn't. In fact, <laughs> even with promoted immigration, many Texians were illegal. America wow. wouldn't be sending its best either. Many of those flooding Texas were outcasts. Even the most famous Texians had their foibles. Jim Bowie was a violent frontiersman, Sam Houston a disgraced politician, William Travis an indebted lawyer, and even Davy Crockett arrived to Texas off the tail end of a disappointing political career. Yeah, that's kind of weird how Texas is it's kind of like just this middle ground between the US and Mexico where you've got the outcasts from the US coming in, pretty much the illegal immigrants in Mexico going, all right, just go over to Texas, we don't want you, you know what I mean? And they've just got this massive, massive piece of land where they just kind of accept saying, yeah, they're the people who we potentially don't like or potentially illegal, and yeah, we'll just leave them in that land. Wow, man. I never knew anything about this about Texas. But, as it turned out, even with all its flaws, the Mexican government was now finally turning a profit off Texas, the new frontier. A turning point would, however, arise in 1826, when the empresario Hayden Edwards declared his settlement independent. Other empresarios were having none of it. They didn't wish to ruin a good thing, so Edwards' rebellion would be put down with ease. But now empresarios were starting to get a bad rap. Okay. Things only got worse. In 1829, the Mexican government abolished slavery. Many Texians were slave owners and bought it on revolt until the Mexican government allowed them some exceptions. Okay, by the way, <laughs> I don't know if I accidentally pulled a face and awesome that slavery abolished. Awesome news. So clearly, Texas was trouble. And so the US twice offered to take it off Mexico's hands, to which President Victoria declined. Twice. Victoria ended his term in March 1829, and after him Mexico suffered a myriad of coups and rebellions, usually as a result of conflict between those desiring a strong centralized Mexico or a federal republic similar to that of the US. During this time of flux, it was decided within the government Texians had to be stopped. The laws of April 6, 1830 were introduced, banning any further American immigration and okay. raising import tariffs. Texas Trying to was avoid pissed. it, I got you. But jumping back for a moment, the aforementioned flux of power would finally settle in 1833, when the soldier and politician Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana was elected president. He won his election off his support for federalism, and then in 1834 completely swapped sides when he ordered the disarmament of all civic militias, dissolved Congress, and in 1835 repealed the Mexican Constitution. Wow. Santa Ana was a dictator. Yeah, well, that's mad how you can, you can basically elect someone on these principles. I mean, he just goes, actually, you know what? I'm going on complete opposite side when he's in power. That is mental. of Mexico would openly rebel against him, and he was ruthless in his suppression. In May of 1835, he would crush the militia in Zacatecas and allow his army to pillage, loot, and rape for two days. He gained his reputation quickly, and soon Texans were not very fond of him. I can imagine, Military man. commanders in Texas feared Texians joining the revolts, and so, maybe counterintuitively, began to crack down. In September 1835, the military was ordered to retake a cannon they had given to the militia in Gonzales. When the residents of Gonzales learned of the Mexican military's intentions, they had only one response. When Mexican forces arrived in Gonzales, they found the militia armed with firearms, the cannon, and a banner that read, come and take it. Oh, Significantly wow. outnumbered, the soldiers were routed with one shot of the cannon. One shot that won the battle. One shot that started the revolution. 
After this, the Texians would quickly hurry to assemble the provisional government, and it was decided Sam Houston would lead as Major General of the new Texian army. Wow, that army man. would be responsible for running the Mexican garrison out of Texas, and with their series of victorious skirmishes, they were able to recruit many more Texians, Tejanos, and volunteers from the US and even Europe. In its lifetime, the army would amass almost 4,000 troops. Back then, that was quite a lot as well, and it is mental, but again, like I said, you have kind of this piece of land which is part of Mexico, but kind of not part of Mexico, because you've got a lot of US immigrants coming in, you've got a lot of outcasts from Mexico going there. There's a bit of a weird relationship. They, for some reason, give them the cannon, and then they want to take it back, and it's like, you know what, I see that. We kind of feel a bit outcast on Mexico. We, we don't want you guys doing this anymore. We don't like you guys. And just putting up a front and being able to withstand them as well, man. Even with that, it was dwarfed by the might of the Mexican Republic. Santa Ana would take personal command of an army of six and a half thousand men oh, wow. to quickly and decisively crush the revolt. With limited time before the Mexican army's arrival, the Texians began to entrench. Colonel Jim Bowie, Colonel William Travis, and the frontiersman Davy Crockett would set up their men at an old Spanish mission turned military base, the Alamo. Major General Houston was well aware the Alamo couldn't hold out against a siege, but Bowie reckoned to allow the fort's capture would be detrimental, and so the Alamo remained garrisoned. Santa Ana and 1800 experienced soldiers met the Alamo in late February 1836. The defenders numbered only a couple hundred. And Santa Ana made his intentions clear when he rose a red flag against the fort. Wow. He would offer no quarter. The siege began immediately with a constant barrage of artillery fire. Jim Bowie would be bedridden with disease, and so command in this trying time was left in the hands of young William Travis. Travis would smuggle letter after letter urging for reinforcements, but there was little in the way of response. On March 2nd, in Washington on Brazos, the Republic of Texas would formally declare its independence. But on March 6, back at the Alamo, the walls would be stormed. With both an advantage in numbers and experience, the Mexican army soon broke through the defences. Wait, was that March 2nd to March 6th? So they managed to get four days of probably celebration, like, yes, we are saying we're independent, and Mexico's like, no, 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 we're not having that. Travis man. died almost instantly. Jim Bowie would be shot dead in his bed, oh, and man. David Crockett captured and executed. Wow. Survivors were few and far between. The Alamo was a slaughter. Santa Ana had learned this way of war back when he was a lieutenant fighting the Green Flag Republic, and he believed it would work again, that it would crush Texas. Remember the Alamo, terror okay. continued. In the very same month, 425 prisoners were rounded up after the Battle of Gilead and massacred, piled up, and burned. Oh, Santa Ana believed this way of war would crush the Texian spirit, but instead the now commander-in-chief, Sam Houston, used these losses to uplift it. Yeah, it's one of them. I feel like that tactic can go either way. It's either going to be like people go, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to lose any anyone else. We're outnumbered. There's no chance. Let's just surrender to them. Or it'll be like, nah, you know what? Let's fight against these. Look at what they've done. We can stop them. I'm not having any of it. That's disgraceful. And then everyone rises together and puts up a best fight. And obviously that is what happened in this case. And I'm assuming they won as well. So it's one of them. It can go either way, that tactic. With the cry of remember the Alamo, remember Gilead, he managed to amass many men to join the cause of the revolution, even as it seemed to be in its death throes. Mexican forces continued to move further and further into Texas as the population fled from it. It was okay. very much a time of retreat for the Texians, and so the Mexicans became accustomed to little resistance. On the 21st of April, that Mexican army was suddenly ambushed. Sam Houston surprised Santa Ana's forces with roughly 900 men of his own, and in a battle that lasted only 18 minutes, he was able to rout minutes. the Mexican forces. Wow. That rout turned into a full-blown retreat, Many Mexican soldiers would attempt to surrender to the Texans to no avail. So Repeating the battle cry, remember the Alamo, remember Gilead, the Texans took to murder. 650 Mexicans died compared to only 11 Texans. What? Santa That's Ana an insane was ratio. found hiding in the marsh and was captured by the Texian army. And as much as they wanted to execute him, it was far more advantageous to have the president of the Mexican Republic as their prisoner. Yep. The remainder of the Mexican forces dared not to move from the Texians while they held Santa Ana, and so the president entered negotiations. 
For three weeks he was held and made to sign off the treaties of Velasco on May 14, 1836. The Mexican army would withdraw south of the Rio Grande and respect the border, but keep in mind, not actually recognize it. After signing this, Santa Ana would safely sail off back to Mexico City. Wow, again, that is another crucial decision because if they did slaughter him, there's going to be a massive uproar in Mexico. Isn't there? Like, that's it. We're not having this anymore. You're part of us. We're coming in. You've murdered him, cold-blooded. We're not having it. We're fighting for him. Kind of like the like they were just rising against what the Mexicans had done. Um, but the fact that managed to keep holding it was like, whoa, 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 they've got our leader. If we do anything now, there's a potential chance that our actions are accidentally murdering our leader. So let's just hold back. And it worked. And very smart. Again, war, especially in them times, was more about strategy and a little bit of luck that we managed to get hold of him. But the strategy of counterattacking him and stuff like that, it, it was such a mental strategy compared to... Army forces obviously helped, but you, you could win it with a bit of strategy. You know what I mean? What I'm trying to say. So, and that was a massive one. With one decisive victory, the Texian army had achieved the unlikely. They had won their independence, but what was even more unlikely was them being able to keep it. Before the end of the war, the provisional government had convened and drawn up a constitution for their nation. One that almost copy and pasted the US constitution. Oh wow. Just with more revolt and slavery sprinkled in. It was clear that the leaders of the republic wished to join the union. However, annexation isn't just said and done. Mexico didn't recognize Texas as independent, and much of the US was torn on whether to actually annex the country. Okay. So Texas, the Lone Star Republic, existed in limbo for almost a decade. Wow, man. Sam Houston served as president for the republic until in 1845, the United States would officially annex the 28th state of Texas. Of course, Mexico didn't like that, but that's a story for another time. As it stood, American expansion had just begun. The seeds of the Union's problems had been planted, and an era of US dominance just beginning. Just beginning, man. However, it must be said that this episode of history contains a lot more than I had time to go over, or that I even could go over. <laughs> history isn't just a story of war and politics, but also of concepts like math, science, and physics. Now, admittedly, I've never... That is definitely going into an ad, so if you want to check that ad out, go to the channel, the link will be in the description. But there we go. I didn't know really anything about that, about Texas. The fact that they were an independent country... For a whole decade. Potentially could have stayed that way. Um, it also hinted at a war between Mexico and America, which potentially I should know about, but I don't, uh, following on from them annexing the Texas. So let me know in the comments if you want me to check that out. And let me know actually what it's called. Um, because, yeah, he was definitely hinting at that. So I imagine something like that happened and I don't know anything about it. So let me know in the comments. That was absolutely mental. And um, I'm glad I now know that about Texas. Wow. Let me know your thoughts on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you legends in the next one. Peace.